असलम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू योर चैनल दी अनाडमी कैनवस एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ द हार्ट सो दिस इज द डायग्राम ऑफ द हार्ट so this is a little bit revision from your knowledge of the journal embryology this blue color line shows the ectoderm this is the neural tube and then the cards cord mesoderm this cord mesoderm form the notochord on each side of the neural tube you are looking at the paraxial mesoderm and paraxial mesoderm will differentiate into somites and somitomeres and somites later on develop into sclerotome myotome and dermatome next to the paraxial mesoderm is intermediate mesoderm and this intermediate mesoderm will form the kidney and gonads and then is the lateral plate mesoderm and this lateral plate mesoderm is divided into two this planknic layer this somatic layer and it is continuous with the extra embryonic mesoderm the cavity between the, these two layers is the intra embryonic coelom so establishment of the cardiogenic field the vascular system appear in the middle of the third week cells destined to form the cardiogenic area they migrate from cranial uh, segment of the um, primitive node and uh, migrate beneath the uh, ectoderm into this planknic layer of the mesoderm and they come to lie anterior to the uh, neural plate and they are they form the cardiogenic area so the cells reside in splanchnic layer of lateral plate and they are induced by underlying pharyngeal endoderm to form the cardiac myoblast cells blood islands also appear in this mesoderm where they they will form the blood cells and vessels by the process of the vascular genesis so with the time the islands unite and form hard shoe shape endothelial line tube surrounded by the myoblast so these are the uh, right this one this is the right endocardial tube and this is the right dorsal aorta and this is the left endocardial tube and the left dorsal aorta intraembryonic cavity over this area develops into the pericardial cavity and in addition to cardiogenic region the blood islands appear bilaterally so this is the bilateral uh, appearance of the uh, blood islands which are forming the dorsal aorta on both sides so first this is the primary heart field area and this primary heart field develop because of the inductive influence of the um, uh, underlying endoderm in the region of the splanchnic mesoderm and cells form the primary heart field later on the secondary heart field is uh, also formed and secondary this is the secondary heart field and this secondary heart fields lie anterior to the uh, anterior to the foregut area in this diagram you can see this is the buccal pharyngeal membrane this area is the secondary heart field this blue area is the primary heart field and this area is the septum transversum in this section you can also appreciate that this is the primitive streak and primitive node you can see these are the cut edge of the amnion this area shows the notochord and the primary uh, the buccal pharyngeal membrane and the primary heart field you can appreciate primary heart field over here so uh, this again the in this diagram you can understand that this is the area cardiogenic area and the coelomic cavity which is present over here will form the uh, pericardial cavity in this diagram you can also uh, understand the relationship of the pericardial area to the buccal pharyngeal membrane so at this level when folding has not started the buccal uh, the pericardial area is lying anterior to the buccal pharyngeal membrane but because of the folding of the embryo also because of the growth of the central nervous system and the brain vesicles the buccopharyngeal membranes come to lie anterior to the pericardial area and pericardial area and cardiogenic area is pushed backwards first into the cervical region and later on into the thoracic region so this is the dorsal view of the late pre somite embryo at approximately 18 day after removal of the amnion and in this you can appreciate this horse shoe shape area which are formed by the myoblast and the hemangioblast which are migrating from the area of the primitive streak and primitive node 
कार्डियोजेनिक फील्ड इज इस्टेब्लिश इन मीजो टर्म जस्ट आफ्टर गेस्ट्रोलेशन दैट इज एटीन टू नाइनटीन डे एंड डिवेलप्स इन टू फुली फंक्शनल मल्टी चैम्बर हार्ट बाय द एर्थ वीक सो इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन सी दीज आर द कार्डियो ब्लड आई लैंड फॉर्मिंग ओवर हेयर एंड दिस इज द मीजो टर्म एंड दिस इज द नोटो कार्ड एंड द न्यूरो एक्टोडर्म प्रेजेंट ओवर हेयर Again, another diagram showing you. This is the fused endocardial tube. This is the venous end of the endocardial tube, and this is the uh, outflow region of the endocardial tube. And here, the endocardial tube is attached to the first aortic arch. The next layer is the myocardium, and then the pericardial cavity is present over here. And this is the dorsal mesocardium, and behind this is the forecut. This diagram show the flat embryonic presomatic embryo with the horseshoe shaped cardiogenic area. So formation and positioning of heart tube initially central portion of cardiac genic area is anterior to the buccopharyngeal membrane and neural plate with closure of neural tube and formation of brain vesicle however the central nervous system grows cranially so rapidly that it extends over the central cardiogenic area and future pericardial cavity. As a result of growth of brain and cephalic folding of buccopharyngeal membrane, you can also appreciate in this diagram that buccopharyngeal membrane is pulled forward, and heart and pericardial cavity first move to the cervical, and later on finally to the thoracic cavity. As a result, the crescent part of the horseshoe area expands to form future outflow and ventricular region. Thus, heart become a continuous expanded tube consisting of an inner endothelial lining and outer myocardial layer. It receives venous drainage at its caudal pole and begin to pump the blood out of first aortic arch into dorsal aorta at its cranial pole. The developing heart tube bulges more and more into pericardial cavity. Initially, tube remains attached to dorsal side of pericardial cavity by fold of the mesodermal tissue, the dorsal mesocardium. No ventral mesocardium is ever formed. So, in this diagram, you can appreciate this is the lateral folding of the embryo. These are the two endocardial tubes, and these are the two dorsal aorta. AR so, because of this lateral folding, these endocardial tubes come closer to each other, and later on, these tube fuses with each other. and become a continuous tube and on the back side uh, the pericardial area is suspended by a dorsal mesocardium uh, but there is no ventral mesocardium so in this diagram you can also appreciate before folding starts these are the angiogenic cell cluster present in the splanchnic layer of the mesoderm and then because of the folding these are the myocardial cells which are formed due to inductive influence and they will uh, form the myoblast of the pericardial area and because of the further folding the continuous heart tube is formed this is the area of the dorsal mesocardium and this is the forecut and you can also appreciate two dorsal aorta present over here cardiac jelly is also formed at this stage and this cardio jelly is formed by the myocardium which is this cardiac jelly is rich in hyaluronic acid and it separates the endocardium from the myocardium <clears throat> another diagram uh, showing you the uh, fused heart tube its cranial end its caudal end this is the inflow part this is the outflow part and then the myocardium and then the pericardium and the pericardial cavity this area shows the dorsal mesocardium in the center part of the dorsal mesocardium it disappears and forms a sinus which is called the transverse pericardial sinus so because of this sinus the whole endocardial cavity forms a single cavity and heart is now suspended in the pericardial cavity at both its end via blood vessels so pro epicardial region it is also very important it is present at caudal border of the dorsal mesocardium and from this area the cells arises which will form the epicardium and later on which will form the third layer of the heart so thus heart tube consist of the three layers the endocardium forming the internal endothelial lining of the heart the myocardium forming the muscular wall and epicardium or visceral pericardium covering outside of the tube.
tube. So this outer layer is responsible also for formation of the coronary arteries including their endothelial lining and smooth muscle and this is again your very important MCQ that is the coronary arteries and endothelial lining uh, and their endothelial lining and smooth muscle they are derived from the epicardium or the visceral pericardium. So uh, up till now we complete our lecture the uh, heart tube and its three layers which are formed from different areas these are the references for the lecture the langman's medical embryology and the gray's anatomy so thank you all dear students for today's class and we will meet inshallah in the next class till then allah Hafiz.